Hi, this is Ian Koniak, and today I'm going to share an illustration of what your brain looks like when you are consuming too much dopamine. And the reason this is important is because a lot of tech sales professionals that I coach have a lot of trouble focusing and they have trouble prospecting and they have trouble doing deep work and define to define deep work. Deep work is coming up with creative ways to either advance a deal that might be stuck or perhaps get executive meeting booked or perhaps develop a point of view or perhaps plan their day or plan their week or plan their quarter. Essentially deep work is anything that has to do with planning, executive planning and problem solving and really using your brain and thinking versus just reacting and, and doing. So um, the reason I wanna share this is because that is so difficult, deep work so difficult for so many reps that when I coach and when I help people with being able to um, do deep work and be focused for periods of three, four, five hours at a time, um, it requires a complete rewiring of the brain and often requires a dopamine detox. So I'm going to show you exactly what this means and how it looks like and ultimately how it can help you be more focused in sales. So let's start by sharing an illustration of your brain on dopamine. What you want to know is that there's really two parts of the brain that I'm going to discuss today. The first on the left is your pleasure center. That's your ventral tegmental area or VTA it's known as and the nucleus accumbens or the NAC, that's your pleasure center. And whenever you're um, doing things that feel good in the moment, or when you're doing busy work, responding to emails, Slack, kind of keeping yourself busy, you're hitting that pleasure center. You're fooling in yourself into feeling good because you're accomplishing something. Whereas planning and executive functions um, occur in the prefrontal cortex. Now, Big disclaimer, I'm not a neuroscientist, but I've done a ton of studying on this. I've read the book, Dopamine Nation. I've listened to a lot of Andrew Huberman, who's a neuroscience at um, Stanford. And it's just really fascinating for me. I studied psychology and always been interested in this, as well as in my own life, I've, I've struggled with addiction. So I've had to actually do a lot of dopamine detoxes and really cleanse my brain to be able to um, to share what I'm, what I'm gonna teach you right now. So it's very much... Um, something I'm knowledgeable about. And that's why I'm sharing this with you today. I think it's important for every salesperson to understand. So these are the two parts of your brain. Now, the pleasure center um, is anything that gives you instant gratification. Now, a lot of times this can be distractions or in the workday, it can be busy work. This can be checking your phone or text or Slack or email. It can be you know, taking a quick training that you're just kind of checking the box, doing expense reports, just kind of checking off that to-do list, responding to customers. Um, it's also customer meetings, right? Uh, when we meet with a customer, if you have like a lot of inbound and you're, you know, doing a lot of customer meetings and closing a lot of deals transactionally, you're getting a lot of dopamine in that um in that pleasure center. So if your day is super busy and you're really active, you know, you're going to hit a lot of dopamine. It's going to feel good. The day's going to fly by. Um, that's kind of the work activities in the personal, um, activities. What we're talking about, um, is obviously things that make your brain feel good. So it could be things like, um, checking social media, scrolling social media or playing video games or, um, watching sports, checking stocks, you know, just browsing your phone, going on LinkedIn, uh, those are very common. And every time you're, you know, doing those things, you're getting a, a quick dopamine hit. Uh, as far as kind of more, I would say, um, more even, even greater dopamine hits are things like um, if you're, you know, watching porn or smoking some weed or alcohol, anything that's making you feel really, really good in the moment, right? it's it's giving you um, excitement. And, and dopamine actually isn't just released when you're doing those things. It's also released in anticipation of doing those things. So if you know you're going to do something exciting, a lot of times that dopamine is already, um, you know, it's already flowing. And that's where cravings um, exist, cravings for food or gambling or sex or um you know, getting drunk or high or whatever. So 
Um, it's ultimately hitting the pleasure center, okay? And when you do these things, you feel happy, you feel good, you feel euphoric. You want to keep doing it because your brain wants more and more of that dopamine. You're motivated to keep doing those activities. Um, and what it looks like is you're basically, think of your, um, you know, your brain as a scale, kind of a, a fulcrum or, or whatnot, where if you hit the dopamine, there's a lever and the scale is moving towards your pleasure center over and over again. So you hit the lever, hit the lever. Well, the challenge is that um, your prefrontal cortex is um, not being necessarily used or think of it as a muscle that's actually not being worked. And this is where deep work occurs in sales. This is where we do future planning. We plan our week. We prepare a big deck. We prepare for a QBR, a big proposal. If you're procrastinating a lot of these things, it's because it doesn't feel good to do it. It takes a lot of time and you know, it's just not fun, your taxes, right? So it's it's things that you don't necessarily get that immediate gratification um, because you're planning for the future, you're preparing for the future. Um, problem solving, research, point of view development, creating insights that you can use for prospecting, um, str strategizing on big deals. These are all done in the prefrontal cortex. And the challenge is if your brain is getting hit with the pleasure center all the time, the brain wants to be in balance. It wants to maintain homeostasis or equilibrium between the different parts of the brain. So if you're not getting the dopamine, what happens is it feels disproportionately painful, okay? So whenever you're just sitting down, like I gotta get this proposal done, I gotta prospect, I gotta do research. It's like, oh, someone shoot me, okay? It feels disproportionately hard. It feels a lot harder than it should. And it's a neurochemical um, issue because all the neural pathways, all that brain activity is actually getting um, concentrated in the pleasure center. So your brain, just by sitting still and wanting to focus and do deep work, it feels a lot harder. It feels like boredom or restlessness or anxiety, um, difficulty fo focusing. It, you can be tired a lot easily. Just to sit down and do this kind of deep work feels really, really difficult. And the reason why is because your brain is actually not being used in proportion to the pleasure center. So this is what's going on when you're getting dopamine hits all the time. Your prefrontal cortex, the neural pathways in that area are actually not firing. And the brain um, is, is basically saying, you know, this feels really, really hard because it's a muscle that actually hasn't been developed or hasn't been used in a while. Now, the good news is that the brain is pretty neuroplastic. So the more you can actually stay disciplined and do the deep work, the more that your brain can actually um, have more synapses and neural pathways firing in your prefrontal cortex, which makes it feel a lot easier to do these things. I used to, again, have struggles with addiction. I was on Adderall for ADHD and doing anything that was like long felt really really challenging. So I procrastinated a lot. I um, pulled all-nighters. I'd wait to the last minute to do you know, QBR preps or proposal preps. It was just a horrible cycle that I was in, um, but I was able to change that. And the way I was able to change that was by doing a, a dopamine detox and really kind of eliminating a lot of the stuff in my personal life that I was doing that made it hard to um, to execute in my professional life. So when I got sober, I, you know, I stopped smoking weed, getting drunk, watching porn, playing video games. I kind of cut it all off. And then I had a lot more time and my brain actually was doing these things that fundamentally um, were, were uh, think of the left side as cheap dopamine and think of um, other areas as rich dopamine, right? It's not, it's okay to get dopamine, but I was started getting it through going on walks with my family, having a nice meal, um, meditation, uh, you know, exercise. I started running. So I started trading kind of that cheap dopamine on the left side for kind of more rich, rewarding dopamine. And, and it really changed everything. Um, at work, I started focusing more on creation versus consumption. Everything on the left side is like consuming. You're taking it in. You're hitting that pleasure center, whereas the right side is creation. And the more that you're able to focus on that right side, and in other words, do the hard things and delay that gratification, the more balanced your brain is. And 
what it feels like is the highs are a lot lower and the lows are a lot higher. So it really kind of feels more even things. It feels a little boring, but boring is actually really good in life because it's sustainable. It's not this crazy roller coaster that you're on that's going up and down. And so really, as I, as I shared, the solution is to move from that instant gratification to delayed gratification in both your personal and your professional life. Um, Mastery requires working on mundane things, right? If you want to get great at enterprise selling, you have to get great at building really powerful point of views and leveraging your executives and creating executive memos and narratives and briefings to get your execs with their execs and working deals that may not close pretty quickly. They might take six to 12 months. You might not see that reward, but that's actually how you make millions of dollars in sales. So it is a holistic approach. You have to work on your personal life um, before you can fix your professional life because how you do one thing is how you do everything. So a lot of what I do with my coaching clients is identify these areas that people are consuming dopamine. I have one client um, just recently, he's been maybe 70 days sober from from pot and he was smoking almost every night. And it's like, he's a different person. He could focus more. He spends more time kind of thinking about his future. He's planning and he actually has um, a really, really good um, prospect of getting a new, a new job. That's double his OTE. Um, and, and he's just having a lot more confidence in his professional life because of what he's cut off in his personal life, because how you do one thing is how you do everything. You can't be focused in your professional life and then just completely check out in your personal life. It doesn't work that way. Um, now, again, if you're aware of this, if this all sounds really good and you know, you say, well, great, I'm just going to do what Ian says and stop doing things that are instantly gratifying. Um, if you can do it on your own, that's great. But my experience has been that it's very hard to change on your, your own. You need accountability, you need support, you need mentorship, you need guidance. And so um, that's a big part of my program is helping you change your habits so you can change your results at work and change your entire life. So if you are interested in, um, you know, in, in, uh, working together, uh, you can book a strategy call with me and we can talk about, you know, or with my team, we can talk about um, where you're struggling, where you need help and see if coaching is a good fit for you. The link for this is in um, on LinkedIn. You can get it in my featured section. You can book a strategy call or in the links of my YouTube or pretty much anywhere where I have social, you can book a strategy call or send me a DM if you want the link. Okay. Um, the goal is to really get to that peace of mind that you're knowing you did your best to be the best you're capable of becoming because when you change your habits, you really will change your life. And you can see this, you know, clients that I've worked with are really changing their habits all around. And, and that applies to both their personal life and their professional life. When you do that, you get, you know, incredible results all across the board for um, being able to work on more revenue generating activities and being able to be focused and present in your marriage and your personal life as a husband or father or wife or mother, it really all does tie together because if you're a dopamine junkie, it's going to be very hard for you to just sit and be present with your children and really, um, you know, be present with your spouse. You're going to want to grab your phone all the time. You're going to want to be scrolling mindlessly. It's just really um, a function of your brain. It's not your fault. It's just, you've been feeding your brain so much dopamine that it makes it really, really difficult to just go in and say, Hey, I'm just going to, you know, change everything. And it's going to be that simple. So, um, again, if you need help, if it's something that you're struggling to do on your own, um, just reach out to my team. We could set up a call and, um, that's a big area and a big focus in my coaching program. But I wanted to share today what your brain looks like. Hopefully this is inspiration to really kind of start cutting out some of those things that you do that get in the way of being your best and focus. If you feel, if it feels hard, if it feels boring, if it feels anxious, it's probably because you're consuming um, too much dopamine and your pleasure centers being overrun in your, in your brain. So the solution is to delay gratification, to say no to those things that feel good now. So you can say yes to um, the things that are going to make you really feel really good later, right? Easy now means hard later. Hard now typically means easy later. You do the hard things now that makes your life much easier later. And honestly, that's been the story of my life. So I will see you guys later and I uh, hope you have a great week.